Smoot. 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 Shh, Smoot. My baby is napping. Smoot. Ooh, sunny. Ah, Smoot. What is a Smoot? Well, my friends, the question you should be asking me is not what is a Smoot, but who is a Smoot? Who's a Smoot? This guy. My full name is Oliver Reed Smoot Jr. and I'm retired. Yes, this man is named Oliver Smoot. You can call him Ollie. He's not only a man, but also a unit of measurement. That's right, he is essentially a living, breathing, human-shaped ruler. What are we even talking about here? How can something be both a man and a measure? Let me answer that question, badly disguised me pretending to be a viewer, by telling you how a Boston fraternity's prank spawned a dictionary-defined measurement and turned a short young MIT student into a lasting legend that brings alumni back year after year. If you've ever crossed the Harvard Bridge that connects Cambridge to Back Bay, you might have noticed what looks like graffiti on the sidewalk that tells you a number of smoots you've traveled. But how long is a smoot exactly? A smoot is the measure of the length of my body when I was 18 and a freshman at MIT. Five feet seven, plus an ear. This needs an explanation. Ollie, let's take a trip down memory lane at the Massachusetts Institute of Technology for the origins of the Smoot. In uh, 1958, I joined a fraternity, Lambda Chi Alpha, the Lambda Zeta at MIT. And uh, while we didn't have hazing, we had weekly sessions before the brothers on Wednesday nights. And each week we got assigned to do some tedious or educational task, like to uh, memorize all the T-stops between Arlington and Kenmore Square. Wow, uh, that's pretty nerdy, but preferable to paddlings, I guess. Continue on, Ollie. In October, our pledge master, Tom O'Connor, said, I've been late to class twice because when walking from our house in Back Bay, Boston, to the classrooms at MIT across the Charles River. He got in the middle and didn't really know how much further there was. He looked at us, there were 14 of us, and uh, he pointed at me because I was the shortest and said, go measure the, the bridge in swoots. So the next night, uh, eight of us set off to uh, measure the bridge in swoots. Uh, frankly, I have very little memory past the 60 or 70 spook mark until the cop car came cruising across the bridge and did a U-turn to come after us and we fled. That must have been around 300 spooks. And then we got to the end at 364 and that's when we painted 364.4 plus one ear. It wasn't easy. Up and down across over 2,000 feet of sidewalk. Ollie said he had to crawl and eventually be carried as the smoots went on and on and on for hours, marking the bridge in 10 smoot increments. A lot of different smoots on that bridge, including some less appropriate ones, but there can only be one Ollie Smoot. You know, I gotta admit, every time I Googled Ollie Smoot, autocorrect kept changing it to Ollie Smooth. And I bet Ollie Smooth can play a sweet sax solo. In the middle of the bridge, there's an arrow pointing to MIT saying, halfway to hell. And that is Ollie's favorite smooth measurement on the bridge. How many days per year would it be raining, sleeting, snowing? On most of those bad days, you were just happy to see, okay, I'm halfway across this bridge. Fraternity brothers have been repainting the lines every year for over 60 years. In the beginning, MIT was not entirely pleased with a little prank, but their view softened over the years when they saw all the good press it was giving the school. So all of this was considered uh... I don't know, a bad thing by the administration. I've been told until into the 70s. Then people started citing it about MIT, and I guess the communications people said, 
oh, if Sports Illustrated is going to write positively about it, then maybe we ought to think positively about it. So their attitude changed, and now it's part of the culture. MIT has certainly embraced the smoot. When the bridge was completely rebuilt in the late 1980s, they made sure that all of the markings that were there were put back in place. MIT did say they were going to recalibrate the smoot in 2016, but thankfully that was just a little April Fool's joke. Hmm, drama alert. Ollie told me that the supervising engineer of the reconstruction told him a shocking fact about their smoot measurements. He claims they measured the Sturro drive end of the bridge wrong. Scandalous. We made a big mistake because the bridge starts on the east side of Storo Drive, not on the west side of Storo Drive. So therefore, there should be probably another 20 or 30 smoots. Is Ollie worried about this? Nah, he suggested anyone concerned can just use negative smoots. Now that's an Ollie smooth reply. MIT University has been celebrating Ollie's legendary laydowns over the decades. There is even a plaque on the bridge in Ollie's honor that they put up during a celebration of the Smoot in 2008. And the world has embraced the Smoot with open arms. It is in the dictionary. And you can measure the distance around the globe on Google Earth in Smoots. Now here's the part where things get ironic. Well, more like just cosmic coincidence. Ollie, a literal measurement man, would later become the chairman of the American National Standards Institute and the president of the International Organization for Standardization. When our president retired and he said, we have to name somebody to the ANSI board of directors, and maybe he was looking at the shortest staffer in the room, I don't know, but he pointed at me and said, Ollie, you're gonna do it. Let that sink in. Ollie Smoot is famous for being a measurement, then makes a career out of measurements. That's a little too much irony for me. It's like if Megan Thee Stallion became a champion horse racer or something. But here's a question. Where does Ollie's last name actually come from? Well, we have one genealogical book called The Smoots of Maryland, 16th century. Uh, some lord in uh, part of what is now the Netherlands had a, uh, I guess, a serf who did something he liked. And so he said, whatever your first name is, you can have a surname. And I'm going to call you William of Smut. I'm sorry. What did you say? William of Smut. William of Smut. 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 And that evolved over the centuries to Smoot. Yeah, you lucked out on that one. His children went on to become MIT students, but did they carry on the legacy and become measurements? Nope, they didn't. Which is good because there's only one Smoot measurement I'll accept. All right, cool stuff, Rob, but this is all kind of silly, right? Why do I need to know about Smoots in my life? Silly? No, 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 no. I'm not accepting this negativity. You better watch yourself. Okay, okay, I was just, wait, 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 wait. Ah! Smoots are great, and they can be used to measure just about everything in Boston. Observe. The Boston Marathon is 24,794.3 smoots. The Prudential Tower is 164.8 smoots high. The height limit on Sturrow Drive is unfortunately only 1.79 smoots. A Dunkin' Donuts Iced Coffee Black is .089 smoots. Plus a little extra smoot for the straw. All right, okay, okay, I get it. Everything can be measured in smoots. Distance to the moon, 1.51367 to the 10th power space smoots. Danny DeVito, .86 smoots. Colonel Sanders, 1.04 smoots. Henry Cavill, 1.08 smoots. And a whole lot of handsome. This CVS receipt, literally infinite smoots. I said go my son Max, 0.52 smoots, and a whole lot of handsome. <laughs> I mean, a smoot is also very close to the social distance measurement of six feet. So just imagine an Ollie smoot laying down between you and the rest of the people around you. Let's take a minute to get serious. 
The Lambda Chi Alpha chapter at the school, the fraternity where the Smoot got its life, well, they've actually had some trouble these past few years. The fraternity remains suspended after hazing allegations and inappropriate behavior came to light in 2014. And there was also an incident where a woman fell from a window during a party. Their fraternity was kicked off campus. Yet alumni have kept coming back to repaint the lines to keep the tradition alive. Except last year because, you know, COVID. But they came back this year to repaint the lines once again. Chris Bruner, current president of the alumni, joined his fellow brothers and some family members outside of their fraternity in late August to prepare to go out and paint. We hope to be able to do this forever, no matter what happens with the fraternity and coming back to MIT. But we hope that this is a nice little milestone or step as well, that we're able to do this, and then hopefully that's one step towards our coming back as an organization within the MIT community. But what about campus police? I'm sure groups of people wandering around in the dark might concern them. But Chris said he called ahead to let them know they would be out painting to avoid any confrontation. Some students in years past haven't been so lucky. In 1996, apparently the whole freshman class did get arrested. And I'm not sure if it's because they didn't give people the proper heads up or if they just got an unlucky run in with a police officer that didn't like them very much. But apparently they were taken into the police station. They were all handcuffed together for hours. And I'm not sure what time they actually got out of the police station or if people let them sit there for a while. But uh, eventually they did make it back to the fraternity house. Luckily, none of these alumni who traveled from far and wide to be there were arrested on this particular night. Each year, the brothers have added their own personal touches to the Smoots. This year, the alumni painted 577 at 57.7 Smoots in honor of their friend who passed away. He was the 577th pledge. This Smoot we're painting right here is in honor of uh, Charlie Snell. Charlie uh, was a class of 71. He was Lambda 577. If there's anything Charlie would like, it would have been his number on the bridge. So we're putting it on. In a way, this can be seen as part of the fraternity's redemption arc, as they prepare to petition the school to accept the fraternity on campus once again, learning from the past and bringing the fraternity into the future. Part of that future are the MIT students who are attending the school right now, including Max Burns, a rising sophomore who was there to help keep the tradition alive. But first semester, we'd always walk by on this bridge to go basically anywhere. It's part of what makes the bridge like unique, you know? It's not just another bridge. You get to walk across and step on the smoots and see them. And I think it's really cool to be restoring that. We are doing something that's very unique. It is our Lambda Chi, it is MIT, and it is Boston. It's nowhere else. And that's a fabulous thing. When I go out there on the bridge, these multiple times I've gotten to do it over the years, I look around and say, wow, look at this. I look at the skyline and say, we're the only ones who get to do this. This is so cool. So a smoot is a real measurement and also much more. And what may seem like graffiti on a bridge to some represents years of friendship and brotherhood. May the smoot be with you. Three, two, one. And a whole lot of handsome. Ow. <laughs> oh, jeez. <laughs>